The Expos take the field here at Olympic Stadium in Montreal, the second game of a four-game series. Last night, as you get a good look at Marquise Grissom heading out to center field, Al Roboski, they called this an inside-the-park home run. No matter any way you look at it, the man can fly. Well, he can fly, and you'll see the timer as he goes around the bases. Should have been a double or triple and an error. But they rule it, and inside the park home run, it wins the ball game. And Marquise Grissom, one of the fastest right-handed batters, circled the bases. Remember, he didn't think inside the park when he began, but he circled the bases 14.4. Marquise was telling me the fastest he could ever remember going down the line to first was 3.7, and that is flying from the right side, the right-handed part of the batter's box. Joe Torre thought he had something working last night in the ninth inning when with two out, Geronimo Pena tied the game with a home run off John Wetland. He hopes for another exciting one tonight, and hopefully the Cardinals will end up on top. Here's his lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It is just plain smart. Bernard Gilkey in left, then Ozzie, then Greg Jeffries hitting third, Ray Lankford back in the lineup. Todd Zeal batting in the five spot. Mark Witten is in right. Geronimo Pena hit the home run last night, also had another hit. He's batting in the seven hole. Then Tom Pagnazzi, the catcher, and the left-hander, Tom Urbani, pitching tonight. He's batting ninth. The defense for the Expos. Moises Alou in left. Marquise Grissom in center and Cliff Floyd in right. With Barry, Cordero, Lansing, and Walker on the infield. Lenny Webster catching the right-hander. Kenny Hill and Al, the former Cardinal, one of two and the only two 14-game winners in the National League. He is putting together a fantastic season. Really is. He just uh, is, ever since he's come to the Expos, he's been outstanding. He has a career mark with the Expos of 39 and 21. That was after being 23 and 32 with St. Louis. Here's where you can see how he ranks first in wins, fifth in winning percentage, seventh in ERA, and he's looking to become the fastest Montreal Expos in their history to reach the 15 win plateau. Charlie Lee. Won 15 games. He is the highest and fastest to win that amount. But with a victory here tonight, Kenny Hill would surpass that total. Hill will face Gilkey, Ozzy, and Jeffries for the Cardinals here in the first. And Ken Hill trying to help the Expos stay at the least three and a half games out in front of Atlanta in the National League East. They're playing at New York while the Expos entertain here in Montreal. Kenny Hill looking in. Search of win number 15, and he has only five losses. A National League All Star. Gilkey rips it to center. Grissom goes back one up. One pitch, one out, and Gilkey hit it hard, but Grissom chased it down, one away. Cardinals have defeated Kenny Hill earlier this year, where Al Cormier was the starter in that one. That was back on May the 14th. Matter of fact, that was the last time. Cormier has made a start for the Redbirds. He will make one tomorrow. That's that numbers right there. Ozzie hit a home run in that game, and so did Whitten. Here is Ozzie. Yeah. Ozzie looks at strike one. Two out of four last night, and for the season, hitting 248. Lenny Webster doing the catching for Montreal tonight. You never know who you might find in their lineup on a nightly basis. Right. Webster, they say, is just an excellent receiver. He can catch and throw with the, the best of them. But they also talk about a guy that has won about three or four games for Felipe with his bat. One of them came here against the Cardinals on that dis distressing Sunday afternoon loss. Chopped off the plate, Lansing a tough play. Two up. A line drive out, the high hopper for the out, and Lansing made a nice play to his right. Well, they got a bunch of scrappy little ball players, and Lansing and Sean Berry are kind of examples of that. These guys will do whatever it takes to win ball games for Felipe and the Expos. And they are winning games at record paces here. The best record in baseball, Montreal Expo. Greg Jeffries hitting 327 digs in. The sixth best average in the National League. He looks at ball one. 
And he's handled Kenny Hill rather well over the years. Ball and a strike. Craig told me you look fastball off of Kenny Hill. Don't throws too hard to look for the split finger or the slider. And the chopper to short. Cordero had him played perfectly, and the Cardinals go in order in the first. Felipe Falou will look for some runs in the bottom of the first inning, going there, no score. Bottom of the first inning, no score here in Montreal. Cardinals went in order. A look at the Expos lineup brought to you by Southwest Airlines. It is just plain smart. Grissom, then Barry, then Moises Alou back in the lineup. He took the night off last night. Larry Walker, Will Cordero, Lenny Webster, Cliff Floyd, Mike Lansing batting eighth, and Kenny Hill, a good athlete, pitching and batting ninth. The defense for the Cardinals, Guilty Langford, Witten, with Zeal, Ozzy, Pena, Jeffries on the infield. Tom Pack, Ozzy catching left-hander Tom Urbani, a record of two and six. Now this is going to be his eighth start and his 18th appearance overall. His two victories, both of them have been combined shutouts. And as a starter, he is two and four with an ERA just over four. His run support a bit low, 3.1 per game. But since his recall, he's one and one and a 2.87 ERA in three starts. He has thrown well since being recalled. He's made good starts against Atlanta and then got into the eighth inning and fell apart in the eighth his last time out against the Mets. I'm sorry, it was only two starts. So. You know what was most disturbing to Tom Urbani in that last start is he gave you seven and a third innings. He was tired a little bit. He gave up a two-run home run to Tim Bogart. He had three two-run home runs in that game, but he never utilized his changeup. After that game, he was sitting there and saying, I never threw a changeup. I remember when he was tired there and Give up that two-run home run to Bogart. That would have been a perfect time. Grissom pops it into shallow right, a leadoff hit. Witten over to cut it off. Grissom with a big turn, but it'll hold at first. We saw the great speed last night, and Grissom thought about trying to challenge Witten, but then thought better of it. Look at the stolen base totals in this lineup. That's the lineup tonight. Only Ludwig Webster is, does not have a steal. Moises Alou, who had that career threatening injury last year in St. Louis, is the only one in the lineup other than the catcher that isn't in double figures. And last night, when Alou didn't play, they put in Frazier. That was what, 20? 20 out of 23. Sean Barry has stolen 12. As you can see, he's been caught zero times this season. And he's not a burner. So you can't tell me that it's just not good, aggressive baseball. And it gets contagious, like hitting, like running. And you can imagine how many times the speed of the Expos has forced the opposition to make mistakes. Ball one to Barry. Talking with Ken Singleton, of course, former big league ball player and now radio and television voice here in Montreal. He said, this Expos ball club does more with 10 hits than other teams do with 15 because they get on base they take an extra base, they steal a base, they force the issue, and they just try to push you until you make a mistake. Joe, that seems like uh, the, the formula the Cardinals had in the 80s. Remember they said, we'll take 10 singles, we'll turn them into doubles and triples because of our ability to steal. But you know, the other thing is, Felipe has convinced his team, don't be afraid to make a mistake. And by not being afraid, they don't make many. Here's a fantastic stat. When the Montreal Expos get 10 or more hits, they are 44 and 9. They get on base, and they're tough to stop from scoring. Well, another aspect is their pitching. Second best in, to the Atlanta Braves. While Bonnie has played around with Grissom over at first, he's 3 and 0 on Sean Berry. This is what you're talking about. Speed can be a disruptive factor. It puts pressure on the defense. It puts a lot of pressure on the battery. And here, Abani is splitting his concentration, worrying about the runner at first. Able to get a strike in there, three and one. Moises Alou will be next, and then Larry Walker.
almost a complete reversal of the lineup from last night for the Expos. 3-1 pitch, runner going, and Barry pops it into right. Pretty well hit at the wall. Langford gone. Two-run home run, Barry. Number nine, two to nothing, Montreal. John Barry is another one of those players that you put him with a good ball club and he becomes that much better. He gets a good count to hit off and he just drives this ball to the opposite field and Lankford runs out of territory. Tom Rabani has given up four two run home runs in his last two starts. Now Alou hits one down the line but foul strike one. Moises Alou sat out last night's game. He's been bothered by a bad hamstring. But he's back in there tonight. Quite a punch in the three and four spots with Alou and Walker. John Barry contributing the number two hole. And that's when you get that kind of production out of the guys like Sean Barry. He was the eighth place hitter last night, two tonight. Then you start getting into this thunder. This is one of the most exciting young players in the game, and those numbers back it up. A ball and a strike on a Lou. Nobody on or out in the chopper to the left side. Ozzy going to have to hurry. No play. Three straight hits. Ozzy playing back comes in on it, gets a high hop. He goes up, and then I think he. Just felt that even though Alou with a sore hamstring missing three games, he just didn't want to take a chance of making an off balance acrobatic throw and have a chance to throw it away. Alou told me, he said, I've sat out three days. I'm going to get three hits tonight. Walker looks at an inside strike. Inside, huh? Hey. Walker hitting 320 against Cardinal pitching this season. Well over 300, I would guess. Again inside, and you gotta like what you see here. All right, jammed him very effectively, pitch up and in, and then he fouls it off his shin. You can see he wears a protector, so this is quite common. Tries to open up, and when he does so, he Leaves that front foot exposed for Bonnie. After the three hits, down two to nothing. Going to start pitching now. Oh, and to the count. And he wouldn't chase it. Ball one. Blue pit to right by Grissom. A two-run home run to right by Barry. Infield hit by Alou. First down of the inning as Urbani strikes out Walker. Breaking ball, but it all was set up with those two fastballs in on it. Here's another change in their lineup. Will Cordero hitting in the five spot. Last night it was Fletcher, their catcher. Cordero nothing out of four last night, but he has hit left-handed pitching well. <laughs> to the left side, two on, one out. Fourth hit of the inning. So I don't know if you could see this, but it looked like once again, Arbani was concerned with the runner at first. Watch his stride. I mean, it's almost like he just lobbed that ball in there, trying to slide step. Look at this. 
throwing all arm, no body, and the ball's just laying right up there and saying, hit me. Altered everything to do the slide step to guard against a loose stealing, and when he did so, it just changed his, the mechanics of pitching to where he had nothing behind the delivery. Lenny Webster digs in, hitting 283 with 21 RBIs. He has two on with one out. Expos are second in the National League in RBIs from their catcher, second to the Dodgers. And obviously, the Dodgers got great production from Piazza. But they have three catchers here, led by Fletcher. And there's Tim Spear and, and Webster. They've gotten a lot of production from their catcher. Urbani would love that double play ball, ball one. It hit hard to get a ground ball when you're up in the strike zone or up out of the strike zone. A little low, two and oh. The bonnet came now all of a sudden, Joe Coleman. I, mean, I wonder if Joe Coleman's going to come out and it just looks like I made the point that Urbani was did not throw any changeups in his last game. Now it looks like he's just trying to guide the ball. He's afraid to throw it for some reason. And standing straight up, not utilizing his lower half, not driving towards the plate, throwing all arm. Jari has seen his club fall behind here two to nothing and the Expos threaten for a bigger bigger rally they have two on only one out and a 2 0 count on Webster three and oh and this is something we have not seen from Urbani since his recall he looks like a completely different pitcher. Three and oh on Webster right down the middle. Three singles, a two run home run in this inning. Two on, one out. Webster ought to get something to hit here. Three and one to count. Now our body slowing it down, trying to buy a little time. Three one pitch runners are going and that's to Ozzy might be two. They got them both six four three fantastic play by Ozzy and Pena great turn at second base the big blow in the inning the two run shot by Sean Berry after one inning in Montreal two to nothing Expos. Call eight one three nine eight seven five zero oh, eight two for more information. Cardinals bat in the second inning, down two to nothing. They send in Langford, Zeal, and Witten. Kenny Hill had a perfect first inning. Langford hitting 271 with 17 home runs, 50 RBIs, and he's hit two home runs in his career against former teammate Kenny Hill. Langford did not start in last night's game came in as a pinch hitter and bat in the ninth inning and saw one pitch and fly to left. Hill has a two to nothing lead to work with now and the 2 0 pitch misses three and oh. Ken Hill has struck out 84 walked 41. 
142 innings. He walks Langford on four straight pitches to start the second after he gets a two run lead. This scouting report is brought to you by your neighborhood Chrysler Plymouth dealers, where real advantages make a real difference. You can see what Kenny Hill has done in his two plus season with the Expos, looking for win number 40 and has only lost 21 times. He's tied with Greg Maddox for number one in the National League with 14 victories. And this year he's had an ERA of 5.73 against the Cardinals the rest of the league 296 so he is amongst the league leaders in numerous pitching categories but the Cardinals the tagged him with a loss earlier this year and they'd like to do so again tonight. Lead off man aboard Langford has stolen 11. He's 11 out of 20. The stolen base department, not a very good percentage at all. Strike one to Zeal. Hitting 267 with 15 home runs and 58 RBIs. Zeal had a fantastic month of July. Trying to start out hot in August. Trying to go the other way. Strike two. The month of July was kind to Todd Zeal. See the league averages, Todd amongst the big guys, you know, the 347 average, Bagwell. Well, I voted for him for the player of the month. We haven't heard yet. Up here we news comes a little late. Oh and two. Ball one. Yeah, I voted for Bagwell and I voted for Brett Saberhagen. I did the same. Saberhagen had a terrific month. ERA of less than one and a half and a record of 4 0. 4 0 had six starts and he had three complete games. And I know he should have had, or he could have easily had one against us. Didn't they take him out after eight? But did he get a little work? No, he went the full Did he go the full night? I know he was dominant. In fact, he struck out Zeal to end the ball game. Ah, uh, that's right. One and two, the count. Langford drew a leadoff walk, and Hill gives him a look. Talking to Zeal and some of the other Cardinal hitters about Rojas last night, said in this ballpark, it's tough to pick up that split-fingered pitch. Whatever the lighting may be or the background, he said it's tough to see, and you could tell by the swings that the Cardinals were getting off Rojas last night that they were not comfortable. The same might happen tonight with Kenny Hill. One two pitch. Langford starts and stops, and Zeal hammers at a high pitch. And a good rip at it. Ray looked like he wanted to go and I think Todd Zeal probably will see more sliders from Kenny Hill than any other hitter. Kind of gotten away from throwing that slider, really just more of the fastball and the split finger. But Lead off man on a one two count on Zeal here in the second. And Zeal another pretty good swing. I guess the rap against Ken Hill when he was with the Cardinals was great arm but an erratic arm he didn't really have good command of the strike zone and when he'd get into trouble he put men on or fall behind hitters but that's been pretty much erased by Joe Kerrigan the pitching coach here in Montreal his control is much better having the opportunity to pitch and to go out there every five days no matter what's going to happen you're still going to get the ball that's that's a big lift off a pitcher, young pitcher. And when he first joined the Expos, they weren't uh, this classy of a team. You know, they were a young team and they could afford to let him develop. One two pitch. Zeal fouls another. So a good at bat here for Zeal, but we'll see who wins the little battle between Hill and Zeal. Witten will be next.
And come inside with a fastball. And he missed inside two and two. Fastball jumps, doesn't it? Yes, it does. See, I think that that pitch right there, Joe, used to be called a strike. And you know, if you're going to be successful this year or now, you have to pitch inside, but you have to be in a position to where you, you don't have to throw strikes because the umpires won't call. We're going to try and do it again. Blackford is running now, and Zeal fouls another away. Didn't have the control of that pitch. They wanted it inside, and it was really back out over the plate. If you can get Kenny Hill into a situation where you can guess fastball, that's when you get it. He gets into trouble because, yes, he throws hard, but if you're looking fastball against him, it's not. He doesn't have a great deal of movement. When he can, you're looking fastball, and he throws that split finger. Or has the command to throw pitches off the plate is when you're in trouble. Been a good at bat for Todd, no matter what he does. Count is two and two. It's going to be a split finger, I believe. Langford running. Zeal hits it deep to left. That might tie it if it's fair. It is a home run, and we're tied at two. Number 16. 60 RBIs and that ties this game. What a good at bat by Todd Zeal. Hanging split finger is exactly what he got. When he was forced to throw a strike he was reluctant to throw another fastball his sliders not really biting real well right now and watch where this split finger goes. Kind of tied, kind of a funny swing, but he drives this ball as far as have you ever seen him drive one. 16th home run of the year, 60 RBIs. Now Witten stands in. The game is tied. A two-run home run by Barry. Answered by a two-run home run by Zeal. And Todd up to the 60 RBI plateau. Out 2 and 0 on Witten. So maybe Kenny Hill is struggling, and that's something we should come to expect against the Cardinals the way he's thrown against St. Louis this season. Well, it just seems like they're so much better suited for the power pitcher. The off speed, the junk faller is the type of pitcher that gives the Cardinals trouble. The guy that'll come up there and challenge it, you know, they're a fastball hitting team. 2 1 pitch to Witten. 2 and 2. Well, I know he hit his, his 15th home run a year ago on September 18th. I don't know when he hit his 16th home run a year ago, but obviously, is the home run department, he's way ahead. Witten breaks his bat, flies one to Grissom, and that's the first down of the inning. Cardinals are getting some pretty full swings against Ken Hill even in the early going. Kenny's lost two of his last three starts since the All-Star break. And see so not real happy with himself right there. Shaking his head a little bit but this is a long contest tonight. Pena what an bat he had last night against Wetland. He eventually tied the game in the ninth inning with home run number 11 for the year. On to Tim Johnson, I said I was shocked that uh, Wetland threw him a 2 2 fastball. He said, So were we. And Payne is drilled, thinks about it, and he'll just walk on down to first. Sounded pretty good from up here. Kenny has now hit six batters on the year. And you see, he just really watch him start to stride into it. He just doesn't react and pick up the flight of the ball until the last second, and it's too late for him to react. He's going, yeah, he throws pretty hard. I got laces now that tell me Leonard Coleman. 
Oh, Geronimo, Geronimo's a little full right now, <laughs> so he didn't want to run out there and take a bite out of Kenny like he did. To Darren Holmes of the Rockies. Here's Pagnazzi. One on, one out. Go ahead, run aboard. Pags hitting 273. Good fastball, strike one. Four home runs for Pagnazzi, 34 RBIs. Had the beginning portion of the night off last night, took over in the ninth. And was the one who caught the throw, the cutoff throw from Pena. A little too late when Grissom slid in with an inside the park home run to win it in the tenth. Into center field, Grissom right there. Two up. Now Grissom plays such a shallow center field that it's another aspect to how good he is in the in the outfield. A lot of those little dunkers that fall in front of other center fielders. He catches and gobbles them all up, and then we've seen already how good he is at going back on a ball also. Pretty good hitting pitcher, Tom or Bonnie digs in. Four out of 18, hitting 222. Irby has yet to hit a big league home run. He will someday. Get a pretty good swing. Runner on at first and two out. Game tied here in the second inning. And a 2 0 count on Urbani. Two and zero oh on Urbani ought to get something to hit right here. Into center field, Grissom retired the side along with Kenny Hill. But in the meantime, after a leadoff walk to Langford, Todd Zeal went deep down the left field line. His shot ties the game at two here in the second. Tied at two, bottom of the second inning, and Tom Urbani back to work. Have you seen the Cardinals magazine yet? It's loaded with articles about your favorite Redbirds, past and present. Full color photos, action posters, and games and trivia. Something for Cardinal fans of all ages. You can subscribe by calling 314-982-7336. Also find them at Schnooks, Dearburns, newsstands within the St. Louis area. Cliff Floyd leads it off. He looked at ball one. Putting together a very solid rookie season. One ball, one strike. Cardinals will send Real Cormier to the mound tomorrow night. He'll be opposed by Gil Heredia. Should have been Ficero, but he's on the disabled list. Good breaking pitch, strike two. Ficero's on the disabled list with a injured right side. And pulled the right side above his rib cage. Look at that pitch. That's a good pitch inside. Second strikeout for Urbani, and he's giving us what we wanted to see more of last night, pitching inside to these Montreal hitters. Well, just when you look at this swing, now you tell me what looks more fluid. Swinging like this, being tied up, handcuffed, or getting your arms extended and driving the ball. One out, nobody on, and the batter is Mike Lansing. He looks at a ball. Real Cormier's pitch tomorrow night. He'll probably jam hitters. And I'll tell you one thing: if he doesn't, we're going to jam him, right? Right. We're going to get all over him because we're he's intelligent enough. He's, he's intelligent enough. He's smart enough, and he's getting to have an opportunity to watch her body tie up hitters. Two old pitch. High, I guess. Three and zero with Ken Hill on deck. Hopefully, Real is someplace. And he can see how easy it is when you watch on TV. Well, now nobody on the leadoff strikeout of Cliff Floyd. And Lansing looks at a strike. Mike was 0 for 3 last night. For a while was the leadoff hitter for the Expos, but he's back down at the bottom of the order. 
And to the second baseman, Pena, with the backhand, two out. And back from 3 0, he got his man and will make Kenny Hill swing the bat here with two out in the second. I always thought Ken Hill would develop into a little better hitter than he has. He'll six out of 45, that's it. Hitting a buck 33. He is leading the National League with 13 sacrifice bunts. But the hitting has never really come too easy to him. Seems like a pretty good athlete. Well, he is a good athlete. Started as a shortstop. High school is pretty good. Little shortstop. Quickly, it's 0 2. And that's why he's not a good hitter. Uncle Charlie. Two out, nobody on. Urbani trying to keep it tied now through two. Expo's got a two run shot from Barry in the first. The Cardinals tied it on a two run home run by Zeal in the second. And now two and two on Hill. team will have the top of the order leading off in the third. Expos jumped out to the lead. The Cardinals have tied them through two. Here's tonight's White Castle Cardinal quiz. The question which Cardinal was a member of the 1988 Canadian Olympic team. I don't know if there could be an easier question that we could possibly throw out there at you. Now, do you think we ought to give you a hint, though? Cardinals bat in the third inning. No, it's not Bernard. Tied at two, top of the order. Gilkey, Ozzie, Jeffries. Kenny Hill gave up the walk and the home run in the second. Gilkey 0 for 1. He hit it hard, but lined out to center his first time. Hitting 251. Two and oh. Bernard is nine for his last 50. Going under 200 in his last 13 starts. And right down the middle on two and oh. And Gilkey with the bat on his shoulder. Ozzy will be next. Three and one. Yoki's hit five home runs, driven in 38. And to the left side, going to be tough. Cordero will put it in his pocket. A leadoff hit. So Gilkey aboard his first hit of the series. He's one out of five now. The ball hard twice tonight, and he gets the leadoff hit here in the third. Hits it off the end of the bat, breaking the bat, hits it in the hole. There's the All Star shortstop. He has committed 21 errors on the year. A good range. He gets to this one, but wisely chose not to make an errant throw. Now Ozzy will try to move Gilkey up. He may drop down a bunt. Runner going, hit and run on, and Cordero will take care of Ozzy one out. Ozzy tried to guide it. The shortstop was going to cover when Gilkey was going, and Ozzy just kind of chopped it, tried to hit it through the vacated shortstop hole. This was by design. You see him hitting down on the ball and trying to hit it towards the shortstop, but Cordero was able to change direction. Catch the ball and throw out Ozzy, but he does advance Gilkey. Go ahead, run at second base with one out for Jeffries and or Langford. <laughs> Saw the score. San Francisco losing at home to Cincinnati. Nine to seven. Barry had five home runs in that game. Once, once again, what? Barry had five home runs in the San Francisco-Cincinnati game. 
Runner at second, one out. And a 1-1 one -one count. Barry, as in Barry Bonds? Well, Barry Bonds had three, and Barry Larkin had two. Thank you. Just a little trick for you and seeing if you're paying attention. I was. It's just one seemed a little interesting to me. I wanted to clarification. The chopper, Cordero gets the big hop and takes care of Jeffries. Two out. Gilkey to third, two down. And Cordero did well to charge this ball and get the high hop. Well, most of the time, if you're aggressive and you charge the ball, you'll get the hop you desire. Gilkey goes to third, but now there's two outs. Darrell really blossomed into an outstanding offensive player, and his defense will come. Runner at third, two out. Ray Langford trying to put the Cardinals on top. Walked and scored his first time. He looks at ball one. Cardinals trying to take advantage of the leadoff hit. One and one on Langford. Rays driven in. 50. Two and one. Kenny Hill has allowed only two hits, but one of them, two run home run. The other one, a leadoff hit here in the third. Trying to pitch around that. He's two thirds out the way there. Two one to Langford. Good pitch inside corner. Two and two. Strikeout. Cardinals get the leadoff man on, but still tied through two and a half. Welcome back in time now for our White Castle Cardinal quiz answer. There's the question which Cardinal was a member of the 1988 Canadian Olympic team. Real Cormier. Ooh, hey. that was tough. Hey. White Castle Cardinal Quiz is brought to you by White Castle for that one-of-a-kind steam grilled taste you're craving. Come to White Castle now. Bottom of the third inning. Two to two the score and the top of the order coming up for the Expos. Here's Grissom. Ozzy in the hole. Has to hurry. Got his man. One out. Breaking ball here, and Ozzie has to go to his right, playing him up the middle. And Ozzie can get on top with his throw. One away, and the batter will be Sean Barry, who homered his first time. Barry, an opposite field home run into right center field his first time up. He looks at a ball and the count evens at one. Here's that home run that put the Expos out on top for a very short while. They like to get their arms extended, see the ball out away from him. And he just drove it and it kept on going. Two and one to count. That's foul. There, Bonnie's velocity has picked up three or four miles an hour in the first inning. It's hard not to get into the flow of a game at this ballpark. What a great atmosphere. Now it is. 2 2 pitch. Full count. 
Yeah, Joe, we experienced a new uh, something new last night uh, here at Olympic Stadium. Going to the subway and have a crowd. Three two to Barry and the looper to right. Witten puts it away. Two out, nobody on. On Sunday, August 28th, the Cardinals meet the Reds. It's Gatorade Cap Day at the ballpark. All paying fans 15 and under receive this two tone blue and red baseball cap bearing the Cardinal emblem courtesy of Gatorade. August 28th, when the Cardinals meet the Reds. Two out, nobody on, and Alou hits it foul past third. Pretty close, but Charlie Williams put up the hands of foul ball. Missed it by that much. Angled his first time. Hitting 333, he takes it low. Urbani had a rough first inning. Set him down in order in the second, trying to do it here in the third. That's foul again. That's strike two. Charlie's in a good mood tonight. Sure is. Called a good game behind the plate last night. One two pitch. Let's see whose signature is on this baseball. Here's what Leonard Coleman's signature looks like. See it? I'm not too sure that baseball is legal. I don't think. Kind of 107 stitches. <laughs> a two out hit up the middle. Anna Lou is two for two. He told me he's going to get three for three, and I said, You're only going to come up three times? He said, Well, I'm going to walk once. So Alou gets the two out hit, and her body will have to deal with Larry Walker. Walker leading the National League with 40 doubles. A power hitter also hitting 319, 16 home runs, and 78 RBI. Bagnazzi wanting these deliveries inside to Walker. That's a little too far inside. And it's two on, two out. <laughs> there is a point where you have to say, not that far inside. So the hit batsman puts two men on, a man in scoring position, and the Expos look for the two out hit from Will Cordero as Urbani hits his first of the night. Yeah. Remember Kenny Hill hit Geronimo Pena last in it. Jack Buck and I were talking with Felipe Alou. He says, Our team is hit by more pitches than any team in the National League, but as soon as Pedro Martinez takes the mound, he's a, he's a headhunter, and it's all his fault. He said, we always give the opposition the benefit of the doubt and pitch got away. Obviously, in that situation, you're not trying to. There's Pedro with the jacket on next to Juan Bell. There have been some situations, though, where he has gone out for hitters. I would, I would argue that with anybody, including Pedro. Evidently, in their final game in Florida, he went after a hitter down there. Well, they got into a situation down there and, you know, with the Chucky Carr breaking up a double play ball. Running into Cordero. Got in a little shoving match. 2 0 pitch. Out in front of a changeup, and there's your change, Mr. Robosky. Oh, and what a perfect hitter to go after with Cordero, a very aggressive free swinger. He was waiting for a 2 0 two and oh bell high fastball, and he got the changeup, and that's strike one. Go ahead, run it second. That's Alou. 
strike two. Cordero singled his first time, but was erased in the double play ball hit by Webster. One out of five in this series so far. Got a chance to interview Cordero on one of the stars of the game interviews. Last time they were in St. Louis, he is a big man for a shortstop. He's put together. Two on, two out, two two pitch. That's a foul ball. And another fine play by the ball girl down the left field foul line. A little short hop she picked up. Earlier she got one a scooter. This time, as you mentioned, short hop and as long as she, as long as she doesn't fall over. Better than I do. Good play. Two on, two out, a two-two count. Cordero trying to put the Expos on top. Full count, and the runners will go. How about that changeup again? Three-two changeup will get him. There it is, and the fly ball to center sends Langford back over his head, off the wall. Two-run score, and it's 4-2 Montreal. And that's the last time I call a pitch. You have to credit Cordero. He was looking for it, and he pounded it over Langford's head in center. Yeah, but Joe, let's watch where the location. I'm not sure that's, I don't think that's a change yet. Well, he, he, uh, now it is, but look where it is. You don't throw a change up up there. That's a batting practice fastball. And it's up there just high. Oh, Webster cutting away. Strike one. So the Expos back on top by two. Mike Shannon will join you for the middle three innings. A wild pitch will send Cordero over to third. Rabani now has given up a home run, hit a batter, and thrown a wild pitch. Been aiming some of these deliveries. The breaking ball. Tag shifts to his left. And wasn't able to surround it, so it got by. Runner at third, two out. One one pitch. Strike two. seen a two out rally happen here a hit by a Lou he hit Larry Walker Cordero hit a three two pitch for a two run double yes. now Cordero's a third with two out uh, similar to his last out and so, you know, get on throwing up two spots to to the Mets they had three two run home runs in that ball game Two pitch up the middle, nicely played by Urbani. That saved a run. And that ends the third. The Expos get two runs on two hits. They leave their second. And after three, Montreal on top, four to two. In the confines of Wrigley Field in Chicago. All you have to do to enter is in this stealing of home with the Cardinal sweepstakes. The grand prize winner will receive round trip airfare courtesy of Southwest Airlines. You'll also get hotel accommodations, tickets to the game, and other great prizes. To enter, send a postcard to Prime Sports Network, 700 St. Louis Union Station, zip code in St. Louis, 63103. You must be 18 or older to enter, and no purchase is necessary. 
contest in September the 5th, so send your postcard today. It's brought to you by Prime Sports Network and Southwest Airlines. Just plain smart. I'm going to get in that contest. Can we get in? Sure. All right, let's get in. We'd like to do that. Here's Mr. Zeal, and here is a strike, and we're underway in the fourth. A 1-1 count. Zeal having another fine season. The home run he hit in the second was his 16th of the year, and his RBI total is up to 60. He tries out Cardero, and Will throws him up. He had a good at bat that second inning, didn't he, Al? He fouled off two or three tough deliveries, and then he got one up in his zone, and uh, you missed it, you say, at home. Did you miss it? Well, we'll show it again. Well, finally, on a 3-2 pitch, he gets a hanging split finger. Hey, goodbye, baseball. Right up there, not where Kenny Hill wants it. It was the 16th home run of the year for Todd, and he had a long way. 60 ribbies now, and his average all the way up to about 270. Whitten whacks one up the middle. And the potential tying run comes to the plate. It is Geronimo Pena. Pena struck by a delivery in the second inning. What do you think of that, Al Robowski? Do you think he was throwing at it? Oh, I don't think so. Oh, I don't either, but if you were the pitcher, what would you have done? You'd have whistled one by Hill's uniform when he came up, wouldn't you? I don't think you threw at him either. But no. You have to protect your hitter. Then you had a home run last night. Been swinging the bat well. You know, Mike, one of those deals, too, where, like a lot of hitters, Pena actually hit himself. Oh, well, yeah. I mean, Doesn't know how to get out of the way. He stands right on top of the plate. We've talked about that, Al. I mentioned two or three years ago. I said someone's going to be seriously yes. injured in this game because of the way the hitters dig in and will not give. And we've had, well, yesterday, I think we had two fellas beat. Kevin Seitz. There goes the runner, and uh, Whitten steals his ninth in a row. He's nine for his last nine and ten on the season. Yeah, Seitz was beamed, and then the Cub third baseman also was hit in the face with a delivery. Shall okay, here's Kenny Webster, usually a very good throwing catcher, and that one was not a particularly good throw, but Mark Whitten learning to pick his spots. And Hill has always had a little trouble delivering from the belt, take a little too much time with that high leg kick, has he? Right. That helps also. There's a popping fastball. Geronimo Pena is at the dish. Four to the score here in the fourth. Expos have out hit the Cardinals 6 3, outscored them 4 2. And you could tie it right here, but he just gets a run home with a single right over Hill's noggin. Now that's the way to play baseball. The guy hits you, the next time up, you line. Send a line drive right past the zero. Lobe. I mean, he whistled it right by the pitcher's head, didn't he? And did you see Hill? He, he tried to put his ears in his armpits. Hey, you'll take note of this. And you mentioned you don't like to be hit. Rude. <laughs> Hill said, wait a minute, you're supposed to hit that pitch. And don't be hitting it back at me. <laughs> That's the way you play this game of baseball. And then you steal second base, right? Right. That's how you play. Let's see if Geronimo, who took care of the first part of that. And what's the other thing? Mike, go in their feet first. Take care of that hard middle go in infielder. There hard. Well, if you're a middle infielder right now, and you're the guy covering, what do you think? Well, today you guys don't. Stuff. Today, they will never think that a guy could come in there and say, I'm going to get even. I'm going to even the score. Oh, look. And he stops. But he starts, but then stops. And did you hear the infielder? There's about three up. There he goes. <laughs> That's also very valuable. When you start like that, you get about three guys to yell. There he goes. The guy that's covering will cheat that step, won't he? And if the hitter puts the ball in play and you're going the other way, it just might give a base hit. Short lead by Geronimo. Then he draws another throw. 
Four to three the score now. Fourth inning. Around him on at first with only one out. You mentioned that short lead. He is a stride away from even putting one foot on the turf. Must be a routine lead with the foot on the on the turf. Time called now as Hill took a little too much of it. And the Cardinal catcher Pagnazzi asked and received. Time. You can ask, but sometimes you don't get it from the whole plate on How many times have you seen a guy call time and just step out? That doesn't work. You can't call time. You have to ask for permission. That one will be close. It'll stay in play, maybe. What a play by Walker. No, didn't, get didn't quite get it. Man, what a try. It's a wonder he didn't break his arm. He tried. He thought to. he had it. I think the fan took it away from him. And I, the fan has every right to do that. Well, not when they go up on the dugout, but. Oh, yeah. If that ball's in there, they can they can get it just as easy. He had it. Yeah, he had it. He had it, and then it rolled out. Boy, what a gallant try, huh? All right, watch from this angle. Watch where he makes contact with the top of the roof with that arm. Look at that elbow. You're lucky. He's got the bad shoulder. That's why he's playing first base instead of the outfield. But look at the banging right down the left arm and elbow under the dugout there. No fault that with that effort. And he had the baseball. But when his arm hit that dugout, the ball rolled out. And he's, he's on flat surface now. And then when he went and made contact with the ball, he stepped down into the dugout. And so if he would have stayed on the same plane, he would have been able to hold on to it. But you can't assist that player in the dugout. Gene Monk, who used to manage this Montreal team, had that rule changed. It used to be you went in the dugout. You, they could knock you down. Push you away from the baseball. Now you can walk into the dugout and catch the ball. Mr. Mark knew the rules as he tried to take advantage of every inch of it. He was a heck of a baseball man. Managed the Phillies, he managed here, the Angels. Still works for the Los Angeles Angels. Tom Pagnazzi's at the plate. He's having some sort of a discussion with either the umpire or the catcher or both. Two and one the count. One on, one out. Pain is at first. Fourth inning action. Geronimo is a tying run. He's running. And he'll have to walk back. Good pitch for Pagnazzi to rip that, but he fouled it straight back. Todd Hill, excuse me, Hill has always had trouble with the Cardinals, hasn't he? Alan? Yeah, I think the part of it is that they know that he's basically a hard thrower, and predominantly the Cardinal hitters are fastball hitters. If and he falls behind the counter often, off a lot of the time, and so he becomes a little more predictable of when he's going to throw the hard stuff. Runner goes again, but. They get the double play anyway. How about that play? That's twice now tonight we've seen the double play with a guy running. Six, four, three, and the Cardinals get only the one run. As the Expos bat, it's four, three, Montreal. Hey, if you're headed down for a loaf of bread or a nice, cool, frosty six-pack, maybe a little bacon for breakfast in the morning, you stop by your snooks store and you have a computer there that you can buy tickets. I tried it last year, Al. I went into that new store right off of the I-170 out there. Went up and said, I want to buy a ticket for the game tonight. Boom, boom, boom. She gave me a box seat. It was a darn good seat. You can get good box seats in one, two sometimes. All you have to do, if you'd like to try it, Afton, Baldwin, Breckenridge Hills, Butler Hill, Columbia Mall, Cross Keys, Grandview, Harvester, if you need information, just call 994-4544-314, the area code. Go shopping and get your Cardinal tickets at Snooks. And a strike is in, too. The left-handed swinging. Cliff Floyd. This guy's been hot with the bat, but not in this series thus far. Brownie. 
Struck him out with a great pitch in the first appearance by this big left-handed swinger. Lloyd, the opportunity to play when Walker injured that rotator cuff in his throwing arm. They put Walker at first, and they put this big fella out in right field. But here tonight, Moises Zalou has him in left, and he has he has Floyd in left. Moises Zalou has moved from left to right. I guess because of the hamstring injury. Not as far from the dugout. I guess I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, Moises has a great throwing arm, so maybe you put him out there for that reason. He is Floyd is a first baseman. And he tries out the Cardinal first baseman to no avail. So that takes care of the first here in the fourth. It's a 4-3 Montreal lead. This Cardinal team fired in last place in the Central Division. Here is Mike Lansing, their second baseman. Now with a victory tonight, the, Card the Cardinals can move back into a tie with Chicago Cubs lost today in extra innings first pitch is a strike call to Lansing and Atlanta is tied with the Mets 1 1 batting in the fifth we're in the fourth I suppose we're watching that scoreboard right it's that time of the year isn't it <laughs> you know they have an optical illusion number up here Look at it this way, Al. Say we go out on the 12th. There's a strike, and it lasts for about three weeks or a month, and then you come back the last two weeks. We will have five splendid races, and I mean it will be like a quarter horse race. They're going to turn them out of the gate, and they've got two weeks to get it done. Well, Jeffries lets this out go for a double. He came in, tried to get it and step on the bag, but he forgot one thing. Not to catch the ball. You You've got the baseball. Right. So let's see right. how they score this. Watch him come up here, and then he checks to see where he is, takes his eye off it. And you see Luis Pujols, the first base coach, is telling Lansing, hey, go on, go on, go to second, go to second. So I haven't ruled on it yet. Now they rule an error. E3, two base error. It better be in there. <laughs> Although I well, what about <laughs> Grissom's inside the park? Well, I'd give him an inside the park home run. What the heck? Oh, okay. I mean, it's the last play of the game. What were the headlines look like? Misplayed triple. Yeah. Scores Grissom. Don't let the truth get, get in the way of a good oh, score. Oh no way! This fella can hurt you. You make a mistake, and Kenny Hill. Is able to drive the ball. And the first two by the Cardinal left hander have missed. They make him a better hitter now. 2 0. Oh. So a two base error by the first baseman, Jeffrey. Gives Montreal a chance. Ozzie has to get by John McSherry, the umpire. He does so. Throws out Hill. Over to third is the runner Lansing, and here comes Marquise Grissom inside the park man. Pretty good effort to get around the show. You're the pitcher. You cannot allow Grissom to beat you here. I get another run on the scoreboard. That's there's Big John. You know he's really a hard worker. Or he's a good umpire. Yeah, I mean. One of the best. You see the size, but boy, he doesn't ever let that weight get in the way of his ability, and he's always hustling on the field. He got his name of Bullpen McSherry a few years back because of all of the hustle. I think twice in the same series, he was hustling down the line to see if a pop up was going to be caught by a player, and he stumbled on the bullpen mound. Thus, Bullpen McSherry. But he has a very good map now of these <laughs> parks around the league. He comes out and walks around the bullpen. That's right. right. He has a he set the cow out in the, the minefield. 
Oh, a change up is a beauty, and it's in at the knees, and it's one and two now. And you can lull yourself, Al Robowski, into making a mistake here now, can't you? You have the base open, but you're out in front, so you say, hmm. Play and a souvenir for one of the field. Mike, a couple of the Cardinal pitchers had noticed on a replay with Grissom in the Florida series that he hit a home run off of Richie Lewis, and afterwards he picked the bat at instead of putting it in the back rack, he took it at the end of the dugout along with him. Kind of was protected. And then they were kind of questioning last night that. Disputed inside the park home run that they kind of hit that ball reaching out away from him, kind of one handed off balance. And that ball went a long way. People kind of wondering if he's using a loaded bat. Well, you can ask for one or nine. Field to his left makes the play. That takes care of Grissom and it takes care of the expo. They strand. Their third of the night, and as we've completed four here in Montreal, the Expos lead it 4-3. As you see online, the score here in Montreal, Quebec, Canada, you see our pitchers. How would you compare them thus far, Mr. Left-hander? Well, I think Ken Hill has the advantage just because he's got a 4-3 lead. A couple more strikeouts for Tom Urbani, but Two fewer hits allowed. It's a toss up. And that's a strike to Tom. Urbani can handle himself too at the dish. Yeah, I don't think either one of them are real proud of their efforts to this point. Put up a few more zeros and their numbers could be respected. And a good pitch on the inside corner. Well, Mr. Hill is trying to become the first 15 game winner in the National League. Mr. Key is already past 15 over in the American League. Round ball up the middle, and there's the pitcher on base. That usually spells trouble. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Coca Cola and the Cardinals have teamed up for Coca Cola autograph all night. We'll be taking on the Florida Marlins on Saturday night, the 17th of September. And all you paying fans, 15 and under, that attend that ball game will receive a stamped autograph ball encased in a plastic ball holder for display. Courtesy of Coca Cola, September the 17th. Yogi at the dish. Bernard has lined to center. He's single and. They do not like the way Mr. Hill is throwing, and they're going to get the bullpen busy. And odd when you got Kenny Hill on the mound, and he's got a one-run lead, and you warm someone up here in the fifth inning. Tim Scott. There's a strike, and it's one and one. Usually, you think you have your ace on the mound, you get a day off. Well, he's lost two of his last three decisions. Coming out of the All-Star game. By the way, he pitched two hit innings in the All-Star game. Pretty well good. Double play and make it easy here for him. Over but low, and it's two and one. Third baseman Barry is about a half a step behind the bag. Walker holds against Tom Abani. Cardero and Lansing are at double play depth. Good fastball. He really is guilty set up for the double play pitch now. Fastball over the inside corner. Now he wants that split finger delivery of the slider alone away, and he might get the 6 4 3. Oh, yeah. Get him reaching, trying to pull a pitch. That's where Bernard gets himself in trouble when he doesn't utilize the entire playing field. Looks like he's coming back inside. He did come inside and he popped him up. Who wants this? The left fielder. There's the first stop. It's one thing to make an out that's doing the baseball, but it's also another if you make an out and advance the runner. It's a big part of this game. You see those great hits. Even when they make it out, they advance the man that's on base. 
In this case, it's not accomplished. They'll play behind the runner now at first with Ozzy at the plate. The Wizard, 0 for 2 tonight as he's grounded to the second baseman and to the shortstop. Ozzy in his last 14 games has hit safely in 13 of them. And during that two week display of baseball, he's batted 333 and he's upped his average to 248 at the start of the night. Webster visits Hill. Hey, Webster, really an active player. Really has his head in the game, really takes charge. Says things to pitchers, will pick up little things and try and help them out, and guide them through a game. He's trying to nurse Hill out of this city. The fifth leadoff single by Arbani. And they got the bullpen busy as soon as that ball went into center field. But Gilkey is flying to left, and Ozzy's in the hole with an 0 2 count. Mike, you like that, don't you? Playing behind. Got a pitcher on at first base, playing behind him. Most definitely. Yeah, I mean, I think sometimes Madge is just too cautious. Up the middle, that baby squeaks on through, and the Redbirds have two on, one out for Jeffries. There you see the Cardinals first base coach Jose Cardinal. With the mouth open telling Lansing what the pitch is. Whether it's going to be a fastball or curveball or breaking ball so they can cheat a little bit. Here is a Mr. Jeffries, first and second, the Cardinal runners only one out. Oh, a beautiful fastball in the outside corner. Just nipped it. Oh, for two as he's grounded twice to Will Cardero, the shortstop. Her body's at second. Ozzy's on at first. There's a double play ball. Four, six, three. And Jeffries is all for three. And the Cardinals fail here in the fifth. As we go to the Montreal half of the fifth, they still lead 4 3. Big Southwest Airlines. Richard Chrysler Plymouth. Come to the ball game and have a nice cold, frosty bush. There is Tom Urbani, and he will work to the Expos here in the sixth. Leading it off is Mr. Perry. Sean, two run homer in the first, fly to right in the third, leads it off here in the fifth. They had a good pitching matchup tonight. 3 6 1 cards, 4 6 0 oh, Expo. Big crowd here at Olympic Stadium. Their attendance is up, and they are. Leading the major leagues with the best record in all of baseball. Montreal Expo. There's their leader, and he has been a good one. I take my hat off to Felipe Alou. I think he, he, and he mostly is the reason this Expo team is playing the way they are. I, I have to concur, Mike. I mean, he just. He's he a has man's a, man. He has these youngsters believing in themselves. He's patient with them. What a play by the wizard. Another for the highlight show. Ozzy Robsbury with that packet. Leaving his feet, catching the ball, and then springing up and throwing him up. Ozzy plays way up the middle, and so he's able to get to some of these balls that would go into center field. And no one will scramble to their feet after diving. No other shortstop prior to Ozzy could ever do that because they, once they go for a ball, they couldn't scramble their feet and get up and throw someone out. Ozzy has a distinctive manner. Here is a little a chance for Whit. He makes it quickly two in the world. That's what you have to do with these big, strong guys. 
Jam him with that baseball. Get it out over the dish and they'll play wacky tack. We'll be right back here tomorrow night. Same time, same place. Just a few new numbers for you. Here is the very dangerous first baseman, Larry Walker. When they had a Lou in left, Grissom in center, Walker in right, they had what was most likely the best outfield all around in all of baseball. They could run, they could throw, they could hit. They had speed, power, they could do it all, those three. Not only could they do it, they did it. <laughs> Very good point. And I'm, we were talking about earlier about you got to jam Walker. I think if we go back and look at the tapes, he's well off the plate now. He jams in there. He jammed in there, and that'll take care of Montreal. Three up, three down as Zeal gets the foul out. And we've completed five here in Quebec. Four, three, Montreal. Golf benefit, September the 12th at Norwood Hills. It benefits children of all ages with special learning needs. So call Smokey Joe and join the 12th annual Lutheran Golf Benefit out at Norwood Hill. Langford starts but stops in time. Ball one. Sixth inning action. Hits are even six apiece. But Montreal has four of the seven runs in this game. Right at Lance. One down. Hit it on the button, but into the leather of Lance. Zeal hit his 16th home run of the year in the second inning. With a man aboard, he now has those 16 round trippers with 60 runs batted in. And his average is up to 268. Outside is the first. He is swinging a hot bat during the month of July. In his last month, a 342 average. With 10 doubles, a triple, five homers, and two dozen RBIs. Do that for six months, and you could have quite uh, quite a total. Well, he goes at this pace. He can go to arbitration again. Get another million, million and a half dollar raise. Well, there's another guy who get a chance to go to arbitration this year. He'll be pitching manana. He's coming off the DL and off of rehab, and he'll pitch tomorrow night. Remember the last time he made a start for the Cardinals? Right here. Right here. Pitched well. May 14th, and he defeated the Expos and Kim Hill. He'll try to do it again tomorrow night. They say he threw well in the minor league. He's throwing a little French at the bat boy over there. Real lives about, oh, what, about five or six hour drive north of here. Tough play for Hill, backpedaling. Boy, he's a good athlete. What a play that is. How about that, folks? That's what you call athletic ability. Oh, and, and just think of the coordination you have to do. Watch him backpedal, going up the mound, then back down the mound and reaching up at the same time and making the off balance throw. That's yeah, tough enough to try to backpedal, but when you have to backpedal downhill and then reach up and grab something and then try to throw it, that's a pretty good play. Mark Witt. Mr. Witt in the last five or six weeks is Hit over 300 against Till. He came in four out of 11. He's now five out of 13 with a home run. Single, stole the base, scored in the fourth. We're now in the sixth, and the Expos still lead by one run. Whitten has designs on time. Good fastball on the inside. You have to pitch. 
hitters inside. I just shocked that more clubs don't pitch Mark Whitney. In. Like that. They have swing, it's one and two. Maybe you can pull the string on him away. Let's see what Mr. Webster has in mind now. He has him in the hole, one and two. He's throwing two fastballs inside. There he goes with that the change away. He split finger. Misses with it. And more importantly, Whit laid off. What do you think? Come back inside now, Ellie. I'm going to throw the fastball, but I always right wanted him. That's what he did. Ripped it to right. It has a chance, but no. Picks it off of the wall and right. He robs Whitten. This Montreal club is playing with determination. They're tough. And as we go to the bottom of the sixth, the Expos lead the cards 4-3. Right now, because space is very limited, the number is 1-800. 888-4376. You can find out about Cardinals Dream Week in Florida. It happens next February when the snow is flying and you'll be in Florida. Wow. 4-3 Montreal on top, sixth inning action. Will Cordero has the big hit here. Two-run double in the third. He's two for two, single in the first. Just inside that evens the count. Well, you know, Tom Abani started this game. Single, a two-run home run by Barry. Alou had a single. And then Cordero, four hits in the first inning. You didn't think he'd be around here for the sixth. Well, the Cardinals have to get this guy, Tom Urbani, Al Rabowski, in their rotation. They've got to pitch him every five days from here on out. I agree. Let him get his confidence. Bring him to spring training and say, hey, you're in the starting rotation. You're going to be in the starting rotation come the All-Star break, so don't worry about it. Go out there and pitch. Man. And we know you can pitch. you gotta, you got to put these guys up. You've got to bolster their confidence. I, I agree with you, and I think that's the biggest difference with Ken Hill as a Cardinal and Ken Hill as an expo. When he first came here, he had the potential to be an outstanding pitcher, but he was always looking over his shoulder. You know, and if I have a bad game today, will I be, uh, you know, taken out of the rotation? Right. But, you, you know, at that time, though, in, in, in fairness to the Cardinals brass, you thought you were a contending team. And it's hard to develop a young pitcher if you're going to try to win. The Dodgers did it all through the years. Take Koufax. If you get the strikeout, Cardero chasing the pitch out of the strike zone. That K is the fourth. The fourth. Look what the Dodgers did with Sandy Kopex. They nursed him along for four or five years. But what you have to do, you've got to say, hey, we know you're going to be a great pitcher. We have confidence that you're going to make some mistakes. We're going to try to work these things out as we go. So you have to have that constructive criticism working with the guy. But more importantly, you still got to pump him up and say, you know, hey, when you're having a tough time, don't worry about that. You're going to learn how to do this. You made that mistake. Don't worry about it. Next time, don't make that mistake. You just keep rolling along. You keep getting better. This game is 70 percent pitching, but it's probably a higher percentage mental. You got it, my man. If you don't think you can, you can do it, chances are you're not. And, and stop and think too, Mike. Uh, you know we had to to force the Montreal Expos to take Ken Hill. They wanted Real Cormier. Base hit for the catcher Lenny Webster. One out single. That will bring in Cliff Floyd. Hey, beginning Friday, live from Los Angeles, the Tennis Center at UCLA, PSN brings you coverage of the Los Angeles Open. Richard Krychek returns to defend his title against players such as Andre Agassi, Michael Chang, and Horace Becker. That begins Friday, 9.30 Central on PSN. Mm, pretty good. 
little racquetball players there, Alabaster. Would you think you'd take one of those guys as your partner? I'd take them as my partner. <laughs> I don't think they'd take me. Well, they, we'd be playing doubles with one uh, with on a singles team. <laughs> and at the knee. And at the knee. One and one now, one on, one out. We are in the sixth. Bomber Bonnie has now thrown 102 pitches. And he has thrown five in the third innings. Now gets the Cardinal bullpen busy. That doesn't bother me. Here's a little cover. It's going to drop to it. Yeah, that's the can't get it. And after he fans Cardell, Webster a little base hit. Now Floyd dumps one into left center. And we'll have two on one out. You know how these guys get to 100 pitches, 110 now. I'd take that counter. I would stay I agree. Take it away from the pitching coach. I've seen those guys in spring training. When they came out of spring training, they'd be throwing 130, 140 pitches down there. There's John Avian up again. You're right. They, they baby pitchers far too much in the minor leagues. And then they come up here, and that's why we have developed a bunch of five inning pitchers. That, and to me, is a long, a long man. Yeah, those quality starts where you get to the sixth inning. That is an arbitration stuff. Yeah, right. Do you think they count pitches on that X? Well, you know what? He knows how to pitch. He doesn't get to that limit, but you you know. But he'll, he pitches in general. He'll throw 120, 130. Sure, he's got nine complete games already. My first, my first year in the Meyer Leagues, Mike, I had back-to-back -back games where I threw 163 pitches and 172. Your arm didn't fall off, did it? No. Nope. Got stronger, did it? Got stronger. The same philosophy. I mean, those might be excessive numbers, but when you're talking about 130 pitches, 140, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Especially if you're on a five-man rotation. I used to throw more than that, and they were on four-man rotation. Here is Lansing, first and second, the Montreal runners, one one is count. Webster and Floyd run the base. Cardinals need a double play ball. Outside nine, it's two. Both bullpens are active. How about this, Mike? You know, since we we average five innings per start, aren't you? And you know, we have trouble finding five starters. Let's just go with a four-man rotation. Well, if you're going to do that, Al, you have to do it in the minor leagues. There go the runners, and that takes care of the double play ball, and it also takes care of getting the force out and the bases are loaded because they started the runner will they pinch hit for Kenny Hill will they Hill in the on deck circle there goes the runners Ozzy he has to get into the hole he saves the run by knocking it down but he has no play now they are going to pinch it yeah like I was Randy thinking Milligan. they would Randy Milligan will come in and pitch hit with the bases loaded and one out so Kenny Hill gives him six innings, and he's in line only for the victory. Cannot lose this one as he goes six innings. He gives three cardinal runs on six Redbird hits. He struck out a man. He hit one. He walked one. So Troy is going to counter. Rodriguez just went out to warm up, so... They don't know if they will bring in Rodriguez. No, he'll bring in Habian right. because of the right-handed hitting Milligan. And that's what's going to happen here. Or Bonnie leaves. He cannot be the winner. He could be the loser. As Tom goes, five and a third. He's touched for four runs on nine base hits. Walked four. Or excuse me, fan four. Let's take a little walk while... Habian warms up. Here is Mr. Habian, one and all, one save. He inherits. The base is loaded, one out. And they'll counter, they'll call back Fletcher, and they'll send in the left-handed swinging. Darren Fletcher. Milligan announced and recalled Fletcher. He's been the everyday catcher, young man from the University of Illinois. 
The pinch hitter against Abian. Now, Abian pitched last night, worked an inning in two thirds, or excuse me, two thirds on Saturday, and he's unscored upon in eight games since his return from the disabled list and has at least one strikeout in each of his last games. Eight games. The game may be on the line right here as the Expos have the bases loaded. They lead by a run. They've out hit the Cardinals. 9-6 outscored them 4-3. Only one out. Fletcher got a big base hit here last night when he doubled into the right field corner. They play into pull. Infield, outfield. Infielders at double play depth except for Jeffrey. He gets a ground ball over there. There's no way he can turn it. He's a little too deep in my estimation. Can't come home with it. And he's not going to get a double play. And Ball two, two and oh. Leads the National League with 11 sacrifice flies. He'd like at least that. Habian has fallen behind two and oh, and he's going to have to come to it now. And you can bet that Darren will be thinking long ball. Well, there's the sacrifice fly. They'll send him from third. Nope, they stop him. I wouldn't have. I'd have sent him home. But they stop him because they have Marquise Grissom, their leadoff man, and they have a lot of confidence in Mr. Grissom, and I don't blame him. Danny Webster out there at third base. Bluffs coming home. Langford made a high but a complete throw to home plate, and I think he would have been would have been safe. And I agree with you. Most advanced scouts will say run on the Cardinal outfielders any opportunity you can. Here's Mr. Grissom. Ted Homer's 42 RBIs at 295 average when this ball game commenced. In his last 14 games, he's batted 400 plus with four home runs, and he's hit three home runs in his last three games. Just inside. Lansing at first. Floyd down at second. Webster, the man at third. Bases loaded, two outs here in the sixth inning. And ball two is low. He went two and zero on Fletcher, the pinch hitter, but he got him to fly to center. He's two and zero on Marquise Grissom. Infield, deep outfield, the same. Tough play for Zio, but he makes it easily, and the inning's over. So Montreal. Montreal doesn't take the chance of sending the runner and it costs them as they strand three. They've left six. We've played six and Montreal leads 4-3. We move into the seventh inning here in Montreal. Great relief work from John Habian. And it's a 4-3 Montreal lead. New pitcher is Tim Scott. He takes over for Kenny Hill and the bullpen will try to save Ken Hill's 15th win of the year. Tim Scott another example of the great work by Joe Kerrigan here in Montreal you look at the pitchers that picked up Tim Scott uh, Jeff Shaw last night Butch Henry Heredia who's pitching tomorrow night he's turned around for Cerro and Hill Joe Kerrigan Joe Kerrigan does not get a lot of credit but he must be doing a fantastic job. Yeah I think uh, I think one of the things that Mike touched on Joe is is that they really build the confidence of a lot of these guys say hey you've got a good arm I'm gonna give you the opportunity to go out there and if you don't do the job tonight don't worry about it Felipe's gonna put you back in there there's Joe Kerrigan I played against him he was sort of a journeyman pitcher got a little bit of playing time with these expos but you're right he's done a good job in molding his staff and they are number two in the National League to the Atlanta Braves. Tom Urbani, the Cardinal starter, goes five and a third, allows four runs on nine hits. And he was helped out by great relief help from John Habia. Pena leading off. He stepped to the plate in last night's game in the ninth inning. Cardinals down by one. And he went deep off John Wetland to tie it. Two two fastball. They wanted it away. It comes back over the inner half, and it was just a line drive. Sinking over the wall and that tied it. 
Payne is showing bunt, takes a strike. It looks like that was all for John Habe, and he'll end up going two thirds of an inning, all zeros. The Cardinals will turn it over to Omar Olivares out of their bullpen. Cardinal pitcher is due up third in this inning, and they'll likely pinch hit for Habian. 1 1 pitch to Pena. Olivares in his last start was at Chicago. The daylight game on Sunday could not get out of the first. Well, I guess that's the, the good news is you got a relief pitcher to go along tonight. One and two on Pena. There is some good news. Alan Watson who came out of the game, I think, Saturday, a little stiffness in his shoulder. And they are he's reporting uh, no problems and is scheduled to start on Friday in Pittsburgh. And see Allen, Bullbaugh, Watson, and Zeke. Cardinals down by a run, batting here in the seventh. Pena, 2 2 count. To the right side, Walker backs up and flips for the out. Amy now one for two. Larry Walker certainly has not shown us any problems of moving to first base. He backs up on this ball, and there you see a strong underhanded toss. No tricks to the pitcher coming down the line. You got a rotator cuff problem like Walker. You're happy that you can throw under him. Bagnazzi bats with one out and nobody on. And a wide strike. One pitch. Ball and a strike on deck is Alisea. Looks like he'll pinch it for Habia. Agnazi is hitless today. 0 for 2 with a fly ball to center and a double play ball. 1 and 2. 37,553. The announced attendance here tonight. Good crowd. Wow, we thought well, it was about 31 last night. We thought that was a good crowd, and now 37 and a half. What's going on in Montreal? They must have a, a winning baseball team. Exciting ball club to watch. One and two on Pagnazzi. Right on that pitch. Scott his first inning of relief work. Hill went six, allowed three runs on six hits. Now it's Scott. One two pitch. Felipe used two pitch hitters. Now Milligan and Fletcher brings in Scott and he's got Shaw throwing. Scott struggled here in this inning. He got Pena, and he's <laughs> one and two on Pagnazzi. He into left center field. Maybe Alou knows something we don't. Grissom over to cut it off. One on, one out. Pagnazzi delivers, and Alisea will come up to pinch it. First hit of the night for Pag. Ags picks up the Cardinals seventh hit and you could see this hanger right up there and bags didn't give her anything. So Alisea now will pinch it unsuccessful in a pinch hit try last night struck out against Rojas runners on at second and third and one out the Cardinals were trying to tie or take the lead in last night's game in the seventh 
And Louis struck out. Now the tying runs at first. One only one out here in the seventh. And a strike to Alisea. Hitting 251 with five home runs and 22 RBI. Louis is developing into a fine pinch hitter. I think he's a little happier to see Tim Scott than yes. Mel Rojas. In the left field should be the second out. Cliff Floyd. Two down. Bagnazzi still at first, two out for Bernard Gilkey. I'm worried about Ed Ram. Ed's. Ed's got his talk show coming up after tonight's game. Mayor Rudy. Runner at first, two out. And Gilkey. That's foul. They'll give us a chance to tell you that tonight after the game, join Ed Randall as he speaks with New York Mayor, Mayor Rudy Giuliani about the possibility of the Yankees leaving New York. Tonight on Ed Randall's Talking Baseball following the Cardinals and the Expo. Yeah, everybody in New York said they'd go to more Yankee games if there was better security and more parking. Might have to move half the Bronx. Talk about leaving tradition, Bob. <laughs> There's no greater tradition still standing than the tradition at Yankee Stadium, but it is tough to get in and out of there. You ever been there? I have. Did a game there last year. Interesting, isn't it? Yes. Runner at first, two out, and the 1 1 to Gilkey. That's well hit to left. Might put the cards on top, but it will fall short. It died at the wall and left. Gilkey gave it a try, but he's the final out in the top of the seventh. Tim Scott gets through a scoreless inning. Time to stretch for three Expos. Bottom of the seventh inning, four to three. The Expos out in front, and Omar Olivares sneaks in out of the bullpen. He'll take over for John Habian, who did fine work. The last time we saw Omar out of the bullpen, he picked up a save against Colorado. Here, he'll try to keep it a one-run game. Uh, let's hope he does that, Omar. His numbers. This is his second relief appearance of the year. And Joe, I mean, these are very important outings for a lot of the Cardinal players. Omar, I imagine tomorrow, Real Cormier. But you have to decide where, where are they going to be part of our future. Strike one from Omar to Sean Barry, who is homered, flied out, and grounded out on a fantastic play by Ozzie Smith back in the fifth. Jammed him. Jeffries flips to Omar. Ooh, one away. Colorado's playing at Houston, and the Astros leading in that game. Scott Service has a home run. They lead three to nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning, and Doug Graybeck has a no-hitter through six. Oh baby! You know, Joe, uh, Houston would be walking away with the Central Division if they could beat Colorado. I think in two years or something like four and 17, four and 18. That's the Rockets. In the Central Division, the Cincinnati Reds have the lead over the Astros. And it's the Pittsburgh Pirates. Then it's the Cubs. And then the Cardinals. 1 0 pitch. Alou leads back. Takes the morning paper out there to the wall and puts those banners in order. Cubs lost today. The Cardinals could pull back even with Chicago. They lost the next two innings at home to the Marlins. Alou, a couple of hits. He told you a three hit night. 
only a three hit night, including a walk. He's got two for three and no walking. Well, three and one. He's had five consec or excuse me, six consecutive multi-hit games. Atlanta and New York are still tied. Atlanta batting in the eighth inning. Pitch. Ooh, he got it past him with a good fastball. The numbers that surprised me for Olivares, I'm sure surprise you with regard to his walks to strikeouts. 3 2 pitch. And Alou stays alive. Omar is not a strikeout pitcher, and you would think the kind of stuff he has, he'd ring up a few more than he has. Well, Talking about is 32 walks allowed in 58 innings and 21 strikeouts. Great two pitch. That's well hit the left center. Mike Gill at the wall and is gone. Five three Montreal number 20 for Moises Alou. There's his three hits. He's strong. He is strong. Let me tell you something. The way he's built, he's going to get stronger. Right out of the way and gets the bat head out in front of the plate and just drives it, pops the wrist, arms extended. So he has the leverage to hit it over the wall. A 20 home run season for Moises Alou. And now Larry Walker looks at ball one. Alou hit 18 a year ago. 20, his single season high at any point in his professional career. And he's just getting better and better. 2 0 now on Walker, and Omar Olivares is. Not doing it again. 3 0 on Walker. Well, Joe, I think that's where I was trying to make the point about the, the Omars and the Oliveras and the Knicks, for however long this season goes. I think you have to seriously say that the fate or their length of service with the Cardinals is in jeopardy, depending on how well they pitch. 3 1 pitch. Work out. I think you're going to find an awful lot of guys that are eligible for arbitration will not be tendered contracts because of the. No, they just would command a salary that would be far superior than to their value to the club. 3 and 2 on Walker. Well, they're getting some full swings in there. Count stays full. Walker is hit 16 home runs. Joe's got the bullpen that he overexposes, overuses all the time, so he didn't get an effort from Oliveris on Sunday. Puts him in this role to redeem himself. Of course, he's only given up one run, but he's faced two batters. He was three and zero oh on Walker. Now it's three and two. He's had trouble getting the ball past Larry Walker. One out walk. A home run and a walk. The walks became embarrassing in his last outing at home against Chicago. And he issues the one out walk here in the seventh. Will Cordero. 
two hits, a single, a two run double, and a strikeout. 5 3 in Montreal here in the seventh. Larry Walker has stolen 15 bases. That's more than anyone on the Cardinal Ball Club. Fifteen out of nineteen attempts. Omar with a lot of slow delivery to the plate because of the high leg kick. We might be looking for another insurance run. Strike one to Cordero. Not so much as a high leg kick, but he wraps it around. And Cordero had a fine night. This offensive player. Two for three. Two RBIs. Little jam shot to center. That's a hit. Walker will not head to third. Lankford throws behind the runner. Pena knocks it down. Pena somehow on that return throw and hit him in the bare hand. I don't know if he reached in. Hit him on the thumb there. Let's watch. Walker very aggressively thought about going to third, and throw behind him. And he short hops Pena. There you see him went off his thumb. Now Joe Torrey will have to get Rodriguez back up again. And Buckles. And Buckles is going to leave this ball club tomorrow with his arm hanging. <laughs> He'll be optioned out. Cormier is activated to start the game. Two on with one out. Webster double play ball. Bullpen can sit down. Six four three. And the Expos get only the one run. On the home run by Alou. And after seven in Montreal, the Expos lead by two. Five six six zero, oh, and I know you've taken the girls to Adventure Island. No, I haven't. It's always closed when we're there. It opens up, I think, after spring training. Ah, so no Fabian's fun court for you. No, but I'm dying to see it. Eighth inning, five to three, Montreal. Al. Ozzie Smith will lead off, then Jeffries, then Langford. You guys aren't getting me in trouble. Eighth inning, 5 3 Montreal, and Ozzie looks at ball one. Tim Scott worked a scoreless seven. Did give up a hit to Fagnazzi. This is a big inning for him. Ozzie, Jeffries, and Langford. Two and zero. Cardinals only trail by two, so got a good man in Ozzy to ignite this offense here in the eighth. He might take a strike. Two balls and nothing to count. Yep, he's taken two and one. Next balls will warm up Jeff Shaw again. At least third time, isn't it? No, they Talked about in the paper today how tired and exhausted Rojas is. Probably is normally Rojas territory. Yeah, so that's why I'm saying is probably Scott and Roja and Scott and Shaw will have to pitch the eighth inning. And you see Jeff Shaw. Two and two on Ozzy. It was two and oh. One out of three tonight. What was that graphic? Do you see three for three in his career against Scott? Expos have banged out 11 hits. What's their record when they get 10 hits or more? 44 and nine. 
2 2 pitch. And a left foot foul. Well, let's make it 44 and 10. Expos have 11 hits tonight, and that stat is in jeopardy of being not quite so lopsided. <laughs> Two and two. Scott looking for the first out here in the eighth. Yeah, Joe, the Cardinals are 10 games under 500. Exactly 500 on the road and 10 games under 500 at home. These Expos are winning baseball at a rapid pace. Two two pitch. Ooh, that almost caught Ozzy on the hand. Full count. Every once in a while, you'll look down and you'll see a new batting stance or a new batting approach from Ozzy Smith. And he's really crouched down now and really choked up. 3 2 pitch from Tim Scott. And the leadoff walk. A nice way to start it. That'll get you in trouble every time in a close ball game, especially a good runner like Ozzy. Well, Graybeck, through seven innings, still has his no hitter, and the, ex, uh, the Astros lead three to nothing. They're batting in the bottom of the seventh. He's walked two and struck out five, so it's not a perfect game. Tying run at the plate, it's Jeffrey. Now, Joe, this could be the biggest opportunity or the best opportunity in regulation for the Cardinals to tie this game or get a lead. I agree. Ozzy's on. Jeffries, Langford, and Zeal coming up. First pitch to Jeffries. Ball one. Greg Jeffries against Tim Scott in his career has hit 750 with four RBI. 800 with six RBIs would look a lot better. Jeffries and Webster's going to go out and have a little chat with Tim Scott, and it probably sounds a little something like this: throw strikes, or you're out of here. In 1970, the Expos had a goal of 70 wins in 1970. They had 69 wins. A young left-handed reliever named Al Robasti was on the mound, falling behind the count to Ron Farrell. Jeffries hits it into right, but right at Alou. And I had fallen behind the count to Ron Fairley. Ted Simmons started yelling behind the plate, said, hey, don't be too fine now. Don't be too fine. So Fairley tells this great story. He said, well, the catcher's telling the pitcher not to be too fine. Well, I as a hitter won't be too fine. I'll look for a pitch right out here and I'll just try and hit it nice. They got their 70 wins on that next pitch. So Allen nicely hit a fairly drive. No, oh. no. Ron fairly hit a nicely pitched. From Robaski. <laughs> this was in 1970. 70. Yeah, that was their goal. 70 wins in 70. That was what, your second year? No, that was my first. First year. Greg Jeffries is not happy. Wow. How about this news when they two run home run by Rico Bronia with one out in the eighth inning off of Bedrosian scores Jeff Kent. Atlanta is trailing the Mets four to one. That's in the eighth inning. It could be a four and a half game lead if these two games stay the way they are. The Montreal Expos are leading by two here in the eighth. And the Braves are trailing by three in the eighth in New York. The only RBI tonight, by the way, for the Braves, a sacrifice fly by Ken Merker. Richard Griffin there 
very colorful PR director up here in Montreal has devised an optical illusion number. And that is with the the eminent strike at date of August the 12th. Any combination of Expo wins and Atlanta losses, it stands at seven now. The optical illusion would be <laughs> be five if it stayed this yeah. way. And it's optical illusion because it's subject to change. That might drop in center. Out goes Cordero. He's there. And Langford's hitless tonight. His average under the 270 mark. It's going to be up to Zeal, who's already hit a two run homer in this game. He represents the tying run with Ozzy on at first and two out. Well, maybe we need to see somebody that has a bad average against Scott. And He'll beat the odds. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Todd's going to get us a big blow right here because he's only one for six against Scott. Todd Jeffries was three for four. Ozzy walked. He was three for three. Langford was one for one. So it proves my point. Amazing. If he does the job for us. Top of the eighth inning, and the Expos lead 5 3. Montreal hoping for two shutout innings from Tim Scott. Gave up a one out hit in the seventh, got around it. A leadoff walk here in the eighth. Just trying to pitch around that. Steals second base without a throw. That's number six and his second of this series. Tim Scott forgot about Ozzie, and Ozzie had a running lead and stole second uncontested. So a base hit could make it a one run game. Zio so could tie it with a home run. Into center, pretty well hit, but Grissom is there, and the inning is over. Cardinals get a leadoff walk. Ozzy stole second. He's left on, and the Cardinals have left five. Bottom of the eighth inning, Expos by two. Three, Montreal in the bottom of the eighth inning. A two-run game was made of it on this swing of the bat by Moises Alou. His 20th home run of the season. It just did get over the wall, and Oliveris gave up that extra run it's a two run game three home runs in this one and the Expos lead by two bottom of the eighth inning and Cliff Floyd will lead off then Lansing then a pinch hitter Floyd in this game is one out of three and the chopper to Pena has to hurry he got it barely for Pena so it's a good thing he had all the height he could reach up and muster he didn't waste any time and a pretty close play right there but they do clip the rookie one out and the batter will be Mike Lansing also one out of three had a hit in his last time up in the sixth Going up there, hacking at the first pitch. Lou Frazier is in the on-deck circle, so he'll hit for Scott. Then the Cardinals will face Wetland in the ninth. Oh and two. Now Frazier's been called back, and it looks like Juan Bell. Oh and two, the count. 
Leadoff man gone. Lansing looks at ball one. Pena, two out. Two down, and the batter will indeed be Juan Bell. Bell will hit for Tim Scott, who went two innings, allowed no runs on one hit. Struck out none, walked one, and he really bridged that gap to get the win. Yeah, they really have some capable arms down there in that bullpen. They only have the four right-handers, Shaw, Scott, Rojas, and Wetland, and they're using the rookie, Gabe White, from the left side. Juan Bell did appear in last night's game not as a starter but off the bench. And he looks at ball one. Bell hitting 272 with two home runs and 10 ribbies. 2 and 0. Oh. Younger brother of George Bell. I wonder where George is now. Half past one. Juan at one point was traded for Eddie Murray. He rips it to right, Witten back. And a one, two, three, perfect inning for Omar. Witten will lead it off in the ninth against John Wetland. Cardinals will bat, trailing Montreal by two. Chicago, Cincinnati wins again in San Francisco. Pittsburgh wins in Philadelphia 3-2. The Mets with a ninth inning three run lead at home over the Atlanta Braves. Houston leading in that game at home over Colorado. San Diego leading at L.A. in the first inning and more specifically Doug Graybeck has a no hitter through seven as he faces the Colorado Rockies. John Wetland takes over as we move into the ninth inning with the Expos leading five three. Well, John blew the save last night. It was his ninth of the season but his first since June 17th he had converted nine straight saves he ended up becoming the winner of the ball game and you know we talked about how important the and good of a one two punch between Rojas and Wetland the Expos are 12 and 0 since June 17th in games in which both Rojas and Wetland have pitched the 26 and 13 overall Rojas is wasn't used tonight. Witten into the right field corner. Alou will not get there. It's past him. Extra bases. Witten will head to third, and he'll stand with a leadoff triple. Nice way to start. One pitch and a triple. And the tying run will come up. Wetland probably thinking, here we go again. Well, he shattered his bat. He broke the bat. Fast ball. Hits it right off the end of the bat. He tried to Cheat a little bit, get it started. Roll, uh, Alou here dies for it. It's just beyond him. And by the time he gets up and retrieves the ball, it's a leadoff triple for Mark Witt. That'll bring in Pena, who homered off Wetland last night. Runner at third, nobody out, and Pena pops it up. Third base side for Ferry. It's out of play. Strike one. Pena one for two tonight. His average of 254. He's at 11 home runs. He's driven in 34. He's really giving some production out of that second base position. 11 home runs. Is the first time in his professional career he's ever been in double figures at any level. He could make it a one run game. He could tie it with the long ball. One and one. Wetland does not appear to have overpowering stuff here tonight. Well, he used to be outstart of this inning. Hadn't had his curveball yet. And here's see where the location on this fastball in is. Oh, hit him. A hit, hit batsman will put the tying run on and Pena letting the left arm hang. Boy, that has just got. 
excruciating pain with that kind of a fastball. It sounded like it hit the bat, so it must have caught a lot of bone. You know, he just dives out over the plate. He hangs out over the plate, and he just never gets out of the way of any pitch. Now they wanted to come inside. They were, you know, obviously in this situation, you don't want to put the tie and run on with nobody on base. Second time he has been hit today. And Felipe Alou is going to come out and talk to Wetland. He's starting to get a little feeling back in that hand. Ow. Take one for the team. Well, he's down to first as the tying run, and Alou is trying to calm Wetland down. Here's that last pitch. See him starting to stride into the ball. Now we're right on the elbow. Oh. Left elbow and you know there's no meat there. It's just all bone. So you can imagine that arm went numb. Pena aboard for the third time tonight. Here's the tying run. Todd Wetland, the player rep for the Expos and Sam. I've got a lot more responsibility, and it's over in New York. Atlanta's defeated. Four to one, so the Expos could lead by four and a half if they could win here tonight. They lead by two, and Bagnazzi takes it low, I guess, ball one. Bagnazzi tonight is one for three, and Wetland is struggling. They have Jeff Shaw warming up in their bullpen if they need some help. Well, that's a nice thing when you have the... Have two run lead and you start a your closer in the in the inning. He can get himself in a little bit of trouble and still has the opportunity to get himself out before this score. Agnazi could make this a one run game. He could tie it. He could put the cards on top. That's foul right side and it will get out of play. Strike one. A solo home run by John Vanderwall in the eighth inning. Leading off, and the no hit bid by Doug Brayback is over. So is the shutout. It's now Houston three, Colorado one in the eighth. Houston trying to keep pace with the Reds. They won today, and the Reds lead by three and a half games. Houston with a win would keep it that way. One and one on Pagnazzi, first and third, nobody up. Pena running. Webster does not make a throw, and Pena is safe at second. Did you see how he ran down to second? Like his arm was broken. You're right. I mean, look at he's even calling timeout and he slid awkwardly into the into the bag, but I'm not too sure. Watch him run down here. Look at his left look, arm. Look at. I'm wondering if he snapped it. When he started to go with the arm motion, he's holding it to the side. He, he's he gonna can't have to continue. Come, he's gonna have to come out of this game. That's a big stolen base <laughs> to get the tying run into scoring position, but you could see his face just change expression after his first couple of steps. You know how he as a base runner, you go out and you run with your arms, pumping your arms. He went to pump with the first stride, and then the arm fell down to the side, went limp. Take a look at it again. Watch that left arm. See right there. He grabs it immediately and just like holding it right there and almost afraid to slide. So now Gerald Young will go and pinch run for Pena. It's going to be all for Pena. Those are heavy bones, you know, in the forearm and elbow, but. Got the numbness once again. Base hit could tie this game. The count two and one on Fagnazzi. Perry will be next. John Wetland has blown nine save opportunities this year. Cardinals will try to make it ten. Wetland was the winner in last night's game and has a record of three and six.
Witten a leadoff triple. That was big. Pena was hit by a pitch. He stole second. He's out of the game. Gerald Young running for him. And a 2 2 count on Fagnazzi. Caught by Lansing. That's a big out. One away. Good base running by Witten and also Gerald Young not to be seeing that with their hearts and not say, okay, I've got to score, particularly Gerald Young. See him hold right there. And if he breaks, you got a double play. Well, when first base open, the Expos could now elect to walk Perry and pitch to the right-handed batter Gilkey. But they will pitch to Perry. It's three pinch hits away from the all-time Cardinal pinch hit record. Hitting 278 overall. Second and third, one out. A little surprise they're pitching to Perry. Strike one. Well, I think what Felipe is saying that I believe my closer can throw the ball by Gerald Perry. One out of seven in his career is Gerald Perry against Wetland. That'll score a run. Lansing, they'll try to get the out at first. Wetland over to cover. Two out. And the tying run is 90 feet away after Witten makes it a 5-4 game. So the put out 4-1, the RBI for Perry. This is always a play you practice in spring training. You got a runner that's going to be at third. You've got to come around, step on the first base bag, and then have the presence of mind to check that runner. Don't allow him to come around to score. Well, the Cardinals still not able to get that big hit, and they turn to Bernard Gilkey. Looked like there was a, an off-speed pitch that Weston kind of hung up there for a drill. Interesting with a tying run at third and two out. Wetland does not have a wild pitch throw this year. Gilkey looks at his strike. Well, that looks like he started him off with a slider. He's got that very good fastball and a very good overhand curveball, but he hasn't had good command of it. 0-1 pitch into right field. Alou is there, and the Expos win. Five to four is the final. And the Expos have won 13 of their last 14, and now they're on a pace to win 110 games. That's quite an accomplishment, and right now they have the best record in baseball. And Felipe Alou has his young troops really charged for however long this season will last. A four and a half game lead over second place Atlanta. 5-4 the final tonight. Back to wrap it up in a moment.